Examination. He's the gentleman that brought in the uh, aerial footage. He also testified that he saw people prone on the bridge. When I get in, we're right to jury questions. Um, jury question number 30. You testified you saw an individual prone and crouch in the crouch position. Did you message that to the ground and have people look into it? He said no, he did not see it at the time he was taking the video, which is what he testified to in the room. Um, Number 31, why did you not have a relief aircraft for when you went and fueled up? Because his recording stops midway, then they went to re, uh, refuel, and then they come back. He said the leadership above advised that only one aircraft was needed, and he was told to deploy when he was told to deploy. The second part of 31, is it known if the defendants were on the ground in the wash or they were just on the bridges? He could not determine that. Um, if on the bridge, could the BLM see them from their position? He couldn't, the judge wouldn't let him answer that either. He couldn't answer that. Tanasi gets back up for recross. Re when did you find out that they were in the crouching and prone position? He testifies that when reviewing the tape for this trial is when he found out, and that's for this trial, not the previous trial, for this trial, when he found out that they were in the crouching and prone position. Who was at that meeting? Well, the prosecution, there was many people, I don't know exactly. Was the FBI there? Yes. And then we bring in Alex Ellis. He is the gentleman that testified um, Wednesday and then was not here Thursday so that we could cross-examine him. Um, before he gets up, Tanasi gets up and um, puts a motion in for circumstantial evidence. He said the government opened the door. They asked Alex Ellis what he, thought the mood of the crowd was um, at the first uh, rally um, at the, on the 12th and he says that that opens them up to ask other questions about the uh, state of mind. The judge says to him, you do not have any case, he cited some case law, you do not have any case that says the defense should rely on circumstantial evidence because they cannot call a defendant to testify. They say, the prosecution can do this because they cannot force a defendant to testify. The defense cannot do this because defense, they have to get on and open themselves to cross-examination to get that information in. This went on for some time with Myrie getting up and saying things like, well, just because we asked that question once does not open the door for anything unlimited. So um, that went on for some time. Let's see, at the very end, the judge just says, uh, well, Tanasi gets up and says, it was not the mood of the crowd It was that was assessed. It was the mood of the crowd that was obsessed. So it opens the door. Myra says it doesn't open the door to everything. The judge says, I have made my ruling and pull in the jury. So she is done hearing from them. Then we get to Alex Ellis's cross. Um, to, right then the judge brings up another jury question that um, they asked if they didn't understand a word could they google it and look it up and she said no you have to write it on a jury question and ask them then we go to Tanasi so you were up on the northbound bridge then you go down into the wash from the northbound bridge a lot of back and forth about where his position was versus when Flynn was actually recording because him and Flynn were in different positions at that time um, he was asked he pulled up a picture and asked about a Nevada Highway Patrol truck. There was an objection. This uh, witness can't identify trucks. There's an objection where, are you just trying to identify what's in the video? Are you asking him what he's seen when he was there? Of course, he answers our great answer. I do not recall seeing that. Um, prior to his testimony last week, he met with three times with the U.S. Attorney's Office and twice with the FBI. And that's just prior to this testimony. Marchese went up there. And he said, um, on the 12th, you went to Bunkerville. In your video, you identified Eric Parker. You said you saw him previously at the stage. And you said he had a weapon. But later, you go in, and, and they show you the pictures, and he didn't actually have an, a weapon. He was unarmed. What made him stick out? Ellis says he was wearing a chest rig with magazines. He was then asked, well, others were wearing chest rigs. Yes, but others were dressed in camo, and you could tell that they were part of a group, and this gentleman was alone. So that's what made him stand out. 
Um, he was asked about when the sheriff spoke about the BLM ceasing operations, Gold Butte being reopened. If he knew where Gold Butte was, which he didn't. Um, he said lots of people were there. Did you see Eric Parker when you got to the parking spot? He said no. Uh, most people were going to the northbound bridge. He asked, oh, you joined those people going to the northbound bridge. Were they walking or running? It was kind of a mixture. He was asked about when he went down into the wash, if he had his back to the bridge at times and back to the southbound bridge at times. That was yes. Levin, um, the judge then interrupts, when you and Flynn are separated, are you watching Flynn? She's covering her butt here. That question is purely to cover her butt because a, he should not be allowed to bring in the video if he is not with Flynn 100% of the time. So right here, she's trying to, they, they were getting those questions, well, are you with Flynn now? Are you not with Flynn now? Really getting it across to the jury that he wasn't with him 100% of the time, and this isn't what he's actually seeing. So the judge goes in and, and puts that question in just to make sure that she covers her butt. Leventhal then, you drove with Ellis in his car with Utah plates. Why did you go? There was an objection. He says, well, this goes to uh, show bias. There was a sidebar, and of course, that was sustained. Um, he brings up the videos, points out long yeah. cameras. He says, did you see Mr. Drexler when you were at the uh, rally? Ellis then says, yes, he did. He could tell because he was wearing a chest plate with magazines, circles Eric. Then um, the questions, like, obviously, it's getting to the point where they're realizing that um, he didn't circle the right person. And he's like, oh, oh, sorry, I got that confused. So he takes Eric off and he circles Stephen Stewart. And he identifies him as Drexler. Then the judge says, well, do you know this person by first name? She, once again, she's trying to cover the basis here for the prosecution. He says, no, there was an objection. They're not using Ellis to identify people. Leventhal, so when did you come to know the names of these people? And he said after he visited with the government. Okay. Um, let's see what else. Lots of going about through the videos, identifying people with cameras, identifying flags, identifying everything except for guns and, and, and not lots of camo. Um, then they brought in parts of the video where you see the BLM. He was asking things like, did you see these men from the northbound bridge? Yes, he did. Did you see him pointing weapons? He said, no, he could not make it from where he was seeing. Um, he was asked if the videos were in se sequential order. Um, then he was asked, in this video, Mr. Flynn asked you to take a note, asking you to see if you can figure out what the BLM were saying. He states they were on a megaphone and it was hard to hear them because the crowd was being loud and then it was brought out that the megaphone wasn't clear. Then we go into the jury questions. Um, one of the jury questions, when you heard about the rally, did you go just to see it or to participate? And why did you record it? He said he went with Flynn and they recorded it because they were reporting on it. The next question, you were 17 at the time. Was this your first time in a crowd of this large and with people with weapons? He said no, he had been to the shooting range before and things like that, but this was different. Um, another jury question. In government's uh, Exhibit 11, you can hear Flynn saying, hit the ground if they start firing. What was your feeling at the time? He said yes, he was in fear that either side would start firing. So I thought that that was good to at least get that added. And then the last jury question was, please label the bridges southbound versus no northbound when there's only one in the picture so they can identify what exactly they're looking at. What we have here is the jury is starting to see um, that there is stuff being hidden. He tried to identify Drexler at first as Eric Parker, then as Stephen Stewart. They are seeing that the witnesses are... Um, being told things by the government. Twice um, today, the aerial footage guy testified that he saw something when he did not know it was there until the government and the prosecution brought it up to him before he was to testify in court upstairs. Then we have Alex Ellis who tries to identify people. The government's trying to get, you know, pointing people out on the screen and telling him who it is. And he's supposed to testify to that in court. Um, this is not a fair trial. This is complete railroading. What they're doing inside um, is crazy. Thank goodness that there's jury questions and some of this can be brought to light because um, 
Obviously, after what we've heard today, both of these witnesses had met with the U.S. Attorney's Office and had met with the FBI more than twice each, each group to show them what they needed to testify on. If you have to be shown what you need to testify on, that is not your testimony. Um, we are going back in with a new witness, and um, we will have an end-of-day update. Thank you all. Um, I, I do want to mention a couple other things. We've got some people, some new people here. Sherry Duvall from Readout News is in the courtroom today. Thank you, Sherry, for coming. We also have a gentleman from, is it South Dakota? Yep. Um, he traveled a long way to be here today, so we appreciate that. We appreciate everyone who's